Hey guys, what's good? So today's video, I want to walk you guys through my photography website using Adobe Portfolio. If you're someone who's trying to create their first website or if you're curious if Adobe Portfolio is a good option, I'm gonna show you guys how I built mine as well as some features that I use and some tips to help you guys get started. All right, let's check it out. All right, so in order for you to have access to Adobe Portfolio, you must have a subscription to one of Adobe Creative Cloud apps. So for like me, I'm already using Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. And if you're a graphic designer, illustrator, uh, filmmaker, and a video editor and using Premiere Pro or Illustrator, Adobe Portfolio comes with it as well with your subscription. Keep in mind, Adobe Portfolio is not a standalone app. So you must be subscribed to one of these apps in order for you to build your website. So let's take a look at the first thing that you need to do before you start putting everything together, which are the themes that it provides. It has 12 themes. For me, I chose Matthias. I think I like the layout there because it's how I pretty much wanna present myself, but there are other themes here as well with different layouts. Some of them also have some landing page introductions. So for this one, um, it has that for Rose, Hegan, Andreas, Marta, and Lucas. They all have landing page intros. You can make it as long as you want. Um, for me, honestly, I like to have the intro or an about in a separate page. So whether the page title is called about, bio, info, or even a contact page, and you put your little blurb there, your little about me, I think it should be in a separate page, to be honest, but don't take my word for that. Uh, if you like this theme with that uh, blurb, with that landing page intro, go for it. Um, and the other thing that I do wanna say is that before you start creating a website, check out other artists, check out other photographers, designers, painters, anybody who uses a portfolio and take elements from that to create your own website. You could take mine as an inspiration. So, Let's take a look at mine. Let's take a look at my website and how I pretty much put it together. So this is my website. It uses three pages. It has an overview page, motion and info, and it has a fourth link to my Instagram. So that's not like a, a page built within my website. It's just a separate link that opens a different window. So I mainly have three uh, pages on my website. So for the overview, it could be it could be named different as well. It could be collection or it pretty much showcases all your work or you can have different projects and then you have motion which can also be worded as video and then I have info which could also be again about contact, um, what is the other one, bio. Doesn't matter what you use but again, I like to have that uh, landing page intro or any intro to be on a separate page. So let's take a look at overview. This is how I want to present myself. I want people who come to my website to see what I can do, what I can offer to clients, to modeling agencies, so they can just scroll through my page and see pretty much what I can do. As long as you can show some you know, good presentation, um, you, know, you could probably get hired or be able to find people to collaborate with and, and whatnot. And then I have a motion page which showcases my videos. Uh, one thing I don't like about this is not being able to change the cover image, but it also keeps your, you, you know, it keeps the user engaged and they're like, okay, what is this video about? It makes them click on it. And then I have the info, uh, which is uh, information about me in third person. So that's something might, that might take a little time for you to put together, but you don't have to do what I do. You can keep it short and simple. And then it has a separate page, page for a contact form. It has some of my selected work from different magazines. And if you don't have that, you know, once you do, you can add that into there. But this is just how I put mine together. Again, you can just put a very short and sweet uh, message just like the ones on the theme page where it has like hi my name is blah 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 it doesn't have to be too long so that is something that you could use and also putting your profile image on there don't get me started about photographers who don't show their face um, that's something I want to talk about in another video but I think it's important to have your face in your website just to show some credibility that you are a real person and yeah, I think that's important. Sometimes I get 
some opinions about like not knowing who you're working with. So that can be scary for some clients. So I think showing who you are, showing your face is pretty much credible. And then again, the other thing is you can put different projects. So for me, like I did a project for Vanguard, which is a magazine. And I think in the future, I'm gonna have a separate link for that in, in my portfolio so that people can take a look at different projects that I've done in the past. And then I wanna show you guys the website builder, some simple features that you can do uh, based on this theme that I have here. And it was also sh you know, shared across different themes as well. So for this, I can reorder the page content. So for me with the overview, with all the images on my landing page, I can just pretty much switch the photos. I can rearrange them the way I want it and then save it and then it'll be like that. The other thing is that you can also add photos to the left side of these images, also on the top, on the right. As long as you take your mouse and highlight over these images on like the bottom, you can add these different types of content forms on here. So image, text, audio, video, et cetera, et cetera. You can add it to left or right, top to bottom, anywhere you want it. And then there's this other thing that you can do as well with these photos, like changing the sizes for it, which is cool, but it's something that I, I don't use. So, but that's something, an option for people if they want to, you know, do that. But I'd rather keep it 50-50 here. And then, oops, let's switch that up a little bit. All right, some quick SEO tips for y'all. Make sure you name your files before you upload it to your website. Name your files with your name, the model's name, agency's name. If you're working with models, you can put the film type you're using, Kodak Portrait 400, or the camera that you're using, Fujifilm, Sony, et cetera, et cetera, or NYC wedding photographer, NYC photographer, LA photographer, SF, whatever you wanna put, put some keywords into your file names because that's gonna help with SEO. Any little thing counts and you wanna do that. And make sure that the files you upload are small. Make sure the file sizes are less than two megabytes. That's what I'm doing. Less than a megabyte at best because you want these photos to load quick on your phone, on the desktop, on tablets. You want those photos to load as quick as possible because Google will or any search engine will recommend your website. If the files are too heavy, they're gonna flag that. No one wants to have a bad experience. And then when it comes to creating your pages, make sure the page titles have some keywords on there. That's gonna help out a lot. All right, guys, those are some quick tips and I hope you guys can use those when creating your website. And then once you're done, you can actually preview your website. They have this preview where you can you where you can view it on what it looks like on desktop, on mobile devices like your phone or your iPad. So for this one here, the second icon here is the iPad. So checking it out on vertical mode and then horizontal mode. And then see, when you see horizontal mode, you can see that my name is not full here, so I need to make modifications there. And then for mobile, uh, vertical, again, how I want my clients to go onto my website and how I wanna present myself is have them engage pretty much like endless scrolling. And then you have horizontal mode on the phone. And that way you can make sure that your website is presentable on all, uh, on all formats. So let's go back to edit and then check out these other features here. So you can make modifications site-wide, meaning across the board, all your pages or this page specifically. So you can change the background, the text, um, anything you want. And how I would like to keep this easy for people who are just starting out is to just use the theme that is offered to you before diving into all these other features. Just use the theme. And again, like you, you'll finish your website within 
30 minutes to an hour. As long as you have your files ready, you can be finished. Just as long as you pick a theme and replace the text titles and then replace the photos and rearrange them the way you want, you're pretty much done. And then, um, so the other things that you have access to is like search engine optimization, analytics, meta tags, Favi icon, all these other small features that, you know, that build a website is here for you to fill out. So it's important to do these things because of SEO. All right, so domain name. Adobe Portfolio provides a subdomain for you to get started. So you can use your name and it'll give a subdomain with .myportfolio.com. I think you've guys seen that on some people's Instagram bios where they have like dot something something dot com um, but i think professionally it should just be dot com instead of having a subdomain on there for me i'm using namecheap uh, for less than 10 bucks for my first year you can do that as well i have a link below you can spend only 650 for your first year check them out they're easy to use i pretty much transferred from a different provider to them and they have good customer service and they got me going in no time. So check out Namecheap if you wanna, especially if you're starting out and you wanna pay less than 10 bucks for your domain, check out Namecheap. All right, all right, so before I go, I do wanna talk about pricing. If you're using Photoshop and Lightroom already, you're doing the 1999 combo, Adobe Portfolio already comes with it, that costs, is 1999 times 12. That comes out to be 239 and 88 cents per year. And if you want to use Namecheap for your first year plus 650 using the link that I have in this video, it will come out to be 246 and 38 cents for your first year. That's pretty much less than $300 per year. And if you want to go a little bit cheaper and you just want to use Lightroom, it's $11.99 per month. So let's do the calculation for that times 12. That comes out to be $143.88 per year. And if you're using Namecheap as your domain for your first year, that comes out to be $150.38. And then pretty much less than $200 per year. I would recommend that compared to other providers. I think Adobe Portfolio is the cheapest option out there and plus you have a great tool like Lightroom to edit your photos with, to organize your photos with and all the features that it provides. I think this is a good price point, less than 200 bucks. I think that's worth it compared to the other providers out there. So yeah, check it out, compare, do some research. I hope what I showcase here helps you guys build your websites and if you're someone who's using another service and if you want to transfer over and you're already using these apps it, i think it would make sense to use adobe portfolio everything here is an option this is to give you guys um you know some ideas and for for those who are starting out in photography or any creative field whatever whatever you're into and you need a website adobe portfolio is one of those websites that you can use to present your work all right, guys, I appreciate you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions about Adobe Portfolio, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.